Once you guys have learned hovering and some of the basics and pickups and set downs, traffic patterns are probably one of the next maneuvers that you'll do and pretty fundamental to general helicopter flight. Alright, hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel again with me, uh, Alex John, owner of Anthelio Helicopters. And we are continuing on our training videos today. Uh, we've uh, got a little bit of a hiatus, but we're back in it now and we're going to pick up with a video today about traffic patterns. Now, once you guys have learned hovering and some of the basics and pickups and set downs, traffic patterns are probably one of the next maneuvers that you'll do and pretty fundamental to general helicopter flying because they incorporate so many of the little maneuvers in with them, all the different approaches and the takeoffs and flying straight level and turns and things like that and climbs and descents. It all happens in the traffic pattern scanning and instrument scanning. And, you know, so they're very, very good little tools for, uh, for getting you up to speed on a lot of different maneuvers and practicing them so uh you know it kind of makes sense to start with an overview today um and then we'll go delve deeper into it uh in coming videos and start you know picking it apart like the layers of an onion to, to really sort of go into the different aspects and options that you've got in the traffic pattern but it all starts today and here at long beach you know we we have an enclosed traffic pattern which is kind of cool um we used to be able to get clearance to go all the way around in one shot, but we can't anymore, so we have to get two clearances to go around, but that's fine. There's no closed traffic anymore here. Um, so, four aspects of a traffic pad, essentially. So, you've got, obviously, we're in a hover, but the first aspect is going to be called the upwind, uh, and then you're going to turn on a crosswind, which is obviously either left or right. In this case, it's left. Then you're on a downwind leg, which is opposite to your upwind, and your final, which we'll call it in a minute. After your downwind leg, uh, you're going to start descending onto your base leg, uh, and then you'll be on your final, which is your final leg, into your landing spot. So kind of a rectangle usually. And it can be the left or right, depending on what airport you're at and what they're trying to protect or not protect, as the case may be. Uh, the airport tends to protect you in the traffic pattern as much as they possibly can and avoid the flow of fixed wing traffic. So in this case, we are going to the left. All right, so we're going to do a normal takeoff. And I'll quickly talk you through that while we're doing it. And then we're going to do a regular... Uh, climb out and uh, crosswind and downwind into a normal approach and uh, all come back down. Alright, so we're just going to do a quick cursory check again. You know, you all have your own flow for your instruments. I tend to go from top to bottom with that flow. You know, just get used to it. In your scan, warning lights roll out, pressure temperatures in the green, all instruments are in the green, where they're supposed to be, and uh, good on fuel. And we're good to go. And I'm going to call the town. Now it's there in the rebel. So I got four Tosier path three left traffic. Clip take off Tosier. Yeah. Alright, so remember hover power is take off power. We don't need to plug any more. So collective stays where it is. And finesse. Cycling forward, keep the nose forward, don't look straight out. You know, wait, anticipate ETL. You're gonna dip a little bit here for a second, then he's gonna come through ETL. And the nose is going to come up slightly, going to get a little jig from the tail as that goes through ETL at the same time. Keep pushing through. You're going to come up to about 35, 40 knots. When you're up there, then you can level that nose off and start your climb. If you need to pull a bit more power, you can. And here we go, positive rate of climb, get away from the ground. At least 500 for a minute. We're going to skirt round here. The building, I don't want to fly directly over the building. And we're looking for about 300 feet on this upwind, if we can at all avoid it. Again, keep visual scanning all the time, making sure that you're in a busy airport environment like this, that uh, looking for traffic, looking for birds, clear left, clear right, and we're going to roll into our crosswind, in this case a left crosswind. And we're rolling out of our crosswind, coming up to 500 feet, and I'm rolling into our downwind. And again, just make sure that you're not dipping your nose or pulling your nose back at this time. And three clear for us, yeah. And rolling out you downward. So it's very, very easy in these turns to lose your attitude flag when you start you know, climbing up or coming down. So just remember, attitude, attitude, attitude flying. Don't be tempted to pull the nose back or push the nose forward. Remember, you're 
climbing with the uh, collective. You're not climbing with the cyclic. Your attitude is maintained with the cyclic, but you're climbing and descending with the collective. All right, here we are in a downwind. All the warning lights are out. Fresh temperatures in the green. Fuel's good. Clear left and right over three zero. Here we go again. Coming across three zero. As soon as we cross three zero, maintain five hundred feet of active runways. We're going to start descent down collective. Right pedal just to maintain your heading and your trim. And a little bit of that cycling to stop the nose dipping. Coming through four hundred feet. Everything's still looking good, no traffic around, just listening on the radios all the time. Rolling into that base turn, a little bit of half-cycling as well. I got a plane on the final there, long, which is fine. Rolling out of the base, looking at the spot. Here we go, coming into the spot. Clear left, clear right, and coming on to final. Now I'm going to start my look for my side picture to get my normal approach. And here we go, just trundling along until I get it. Just keeping as much airspeed as I can, in this case about 50 knots. There's my side picture, something between trip strings and the instrument console. Again, no hard and fast rule on exactly where this is supposed to be. Uh, but it's, you know, you'll know, certainly know if, it, if, if it's below the instrument console, you're shallow. If you're above the trip strings, uh, and you're definitely steep, so, you know, you'll figure it out depending on what, what's going on. But here we are, coming into that final approach. I'm still looking at the pad. Trying to look at the windsock, trying to figure out what's going to go on here. That'll give me an idea of what my pedal movements are going to be when it gets to the bottom. I've got a pretty good crosswind here, so I'm going to cover in quite a lot. And we'll talk about crosswind approaches in future videos here, but this one I have to almost fly a little bit sideways. Mainly because the wind is coming from my, my left right now, and it's going to be a little bit hard to keep it straight. As I come through ETL, I'm anticipating ETL, there's ETL, that vibration. Now we're going to bring that nose straight, eyes are out front, bringing that everything back into effect. And here we are, coming down to the ground. Oh, that crosswind's fun today. Wow, here we are, coming to the ground there. So there's two choices with that, with that type of approach. When I'm doing a crosswind approach, I can choose to keep it at an angle all the way to the ground, or I can bring it my nose level, no matter how hard that is, um, prior to getting to the ground, probably 100 feet before the ground or 50 feet before the ground. It is not a right or a wrong way to it. People will argue it both ways pretty much on that one. You know, some people will say, always keep it to the wind as much as possible to maintain control. Other people will say, get that nose straight, <coughs> because if you have any issues, uh, any, any engine failure or anything other issues is when you're at that last 50 feet, you want your skids level and skids straight so you don't have a possibility of roll. So, you know, you could, you could argue it both ways, uh, but as long as it's safe and controlled, I don't think you're going to have a problem with it. All right. Uh, right now, we're just going to go and do another quick one and just demonstrate a max performance takeoff and a steep approach just to, as part of this introduction here, quickly. Uh, I'm not really going to talk too much about it, but at least you guys will see it. All right, warning lights are out, gates in the green, pressure temperatures are good. And it gives us a sort of a hybrid max performance takeoff right now, getting a bit of ETL and then coming up as much as I can to a very, very steep climb if we were clearing obstacles. We'll go over more of a textbook definition of that later. Uh, but I'm just sort of demonstrating a couple of different options that you've got with the R44 or in, when you're flying. You know, max performance takeoffs generally tend to be from just a straight hover, uh, but obviously it's nice if you can get through ETL first to get more lift before you're pulling that power to get above the obstacles. So that was kind of simulating a way of doing that. And uh, we'll talk through both ways in, uh, in those future videos there. Uh, we're going to come into a steep approach. So, again, steep approaches, you know, I used to fly EMS, uh, or sorry, HAA these days, not EMS, that's the old school stuff. And uh, steep approaches were our predominant uh, go-to for approaches uh, to make sure that we cleared wires and other obstacles around when we're landing us in the uh, other seat flights out in the field. So we got pretty good at them. And uh, they ended up being pretty steep as well. Um, I had double windows in that helicopter, so it was a lot easier to see between my feet, which I don't have in the R44, so I'm kind of uh, going to be extrapolating things a little bit here. Uh, but nevertheless, 
you know, the main thing about steep approaches is you've got to know where ETL is so you don't fall out of it and you don't settle. Uh, you don't want to get any, any hint of settling with power. Uh, so you've really got to know your wind direction, know where ETL is and know how to manage that. We'll talk more about it today, just going to be coming in and so you're going to see the profile of how it is. And, uh, you know, usually I like to deal with one thing at once. So you, my first thing I deal with is see how slow I can get without going over to ETL. That will dictate, you know, my airspeed coming in and then I'll set up my rate of descent as well. So here we are. I'm going to kind of offset the helicopter a bit as well because this doesn't have a chin bubble. So I want to see what's going on. Uh, through as much as I can without the instrument console in the way. So I'm slowing down right now, coming through 35 knots. I don't feel ETL yet, but as soon as I do, then I won't go any slower there. I kind of feel it right there. So that's where I think, okay, I don't want to go any slower than that. So now I'm going to manage that. I'm going to level the nose out and pull the collective. And so we don't get more than about 300 feet a minute because I don't want to fall through it because that's where it does get dangerous. And we just sit here. I just fly the attitude and keep everything level. And I'm not going any slower than I was, uh, but I'm feeling out ETL. Um, there's a lot of misnomers around it and uh, again we'll talk more about that in future videos but once you get used to it you can manage yourself within it as well. You get to learn the different phases of ETL and what you can cope with and what you can't cope with. So here we are, pretty blowing steep. Uh, we're going to come, I'm going to lose sight of the pad in a second because I'm right over the top of it. And here we are coming down on the top of it for that steep approach and my tail just disappeared. I've lost detail in my tail, so it starts twitching around, and then I've lost it in my main rotor, and here we are down on the pad for a steep approach. So, a couple of different ways of approaching, and a couple of different ways of departing, and that is your introduction to traffic patterns today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the overview of traffic patterns, and stand by for further videos in the coming weeks, breaking down all the different maneuvers in there, so that you get a bit more meat on the bones, and... Uh, Hopefully learn a bit more about uh, all those different maneuvers and different approaches and the uh, different departures. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope everyone flies safe out there and look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.